We're going to now integrate Bootstrap into our project. So the first thing we're going to do is right click on the solution and go to manage Bower packages. Bower is a package manager for really a lot of UI based packages and Bootstrap is of course UI. So we're gonna go over here to browse and there's Bootstrap so you can click either installation button, you can see the version. So it's not getting the version four, that one's not even there. So we'll get a stable release on this version three and I'll go ahead and start the installation. So that will take a little bit of time and then we'll have it, it'll be ready to go. And let's see here, I think actually it might be there now. Let's take a look in our dependencies, there it is. Okay, so that was pretty quick. And now what we need to do is add a couple of files. So I'm gonna right click on this and go to add. We want to do new item, we're gonna add a configuration, so ASP.NET configuration. If you don't see it, you can type in config and that'll get you to it as well. So here we are. And we're going to add a bower.json. And I'll just click add. And by the way, you wanna do it in this order because you'll likely get an error if you add the files first and then add the package. And so there's one more thing we need to add, one more file, which is gonna be a .bowerrc. And that is the bower configuration file. And that's such an odd name. We're gonna just do a text file and do dot bower rc. And when we add that, it creates a hierarchy. You can see here, they're kind of paired up together. So we're gonna start inside of our bower file. We can go ahead and remove this. We don't need that. So we'll just do a name on this of ASP.NET. And then we can do comma. There's a few strings in here that um, are just kind of gonna turn into defaults for us. And then finally, the important part of this is dependencies, which you can see here is gonna create a dictionary. So we want bootstrap, not 386, just bootstrap. And we want a version in here, which is the same one we saw. So our 3.37, then comma, we're gonna also do jQuery. You can see we're getting some hints on this, and it's gonna be this one here which is gonna be the 3.2.1. So that will conclude that part of it. And then next we're going to need another node here called resolutions. And that's gonna also open up a dictionary. So we're gonna do the capital J query and we're gonna have a version that's gonna be the same one. So that is it for that file. I'm gonna save, you can see a few things happening down here. Basically it goes out and starts fetching some of these packages. Notice our WW root. There's still nothing inside of here right now. If I open this up, there's things going on inside of Bower that you can see. We need to tell it, where do we want to put all of this? That's where this configuration file comes in. And this is a pretty simple entry. So we're just going to open this up. One entry called directory. And that directory is going to go inside of our WW root. So we're going to have WW root and we're going to put it inside of lib. Save this now. So a few more things should start happening at this point. And let's just see what is going on with this. I think if I rebuild it or actually try and run this, it may go ahead and clear up. All right, so let's go back over here. It looks like there's still something going on with that. Maybe it's something I did over here. Actually, I'm gonna stop this. There's another part of this, which is to restore. So if I right click on Bower, restore packages, but before we do that, I want to do a quick search. So just go out to Google, because there's um, a Microsoft page that actually shows you how to get through this. So what I want to do is, let's see, manage client side packages, Bower, ASP.NET. And here we are, I think this is the one, yep, use Bower in ASP.NET Core. So scrolling down, they're gonna show pretty much the same steps that we went through, as, except they're using Font Awesome as an example. Um, so we're just gonna keep going through this. So here it is, you can see some of the, the location here that's inside of our Bower rec, they've got that there. Then I think they show as well the Bower JSON file. No, they just start coming in with paths. Um, here it is. So this is the same thing that we added. Um, you can see the jQuery bootstrap, and let's see, scroll a little bit down. I thought there was a little bit more in here than that. 
Okay, so I'm going to go back over here and let's try and do restore on these packages to see if everything will download. And just open this up. jQuery is not installed. Actually, the issue is that this is a capital J. It should be a small j. Let's see, remove that. Go back in here and look for the hint on this. I don't think that one has one right there. This one did. So let's see if we can find this one is the one. Okay, and save this. Now it should make a difference. All right, so you can see now at the top level, at least that's clearing up. And there's our jQuery there. And then we have our WW root. You can see in the lib now that's looking good as well. So what we need to do is create some paths to this. We're going to use our razor page to do that. And let's see, we are going to scroll up. So we have a few different things here that's going to help. So we have in our head section, we're going to put these references. And we're going to add the first one, which is going to be our link um, relation to style sheet. And we're going to put a path to this. This is going to go to our bootstrap CSS file. And I think that's all we're going to need, at least to demonstrate we have bootstrap. So I've got this expanded over here. It's in distribution CSS. There it is. So we're going to do a path to lib bootstrap. And then we're going to do distribution CSS. And finally, bootstrap CSS, which is this one. And you can do the same as well for the jQuery.js and the bootstrap.js, those would be script references and not links. So let's go ahead and run this now and see if we do have bootstrap up and running. All right, so we're going to go to our razor page. And no, so this would all look different if it were running. Let's take a look and see what's going on. So just do an inspect on this. One of the easiest ways we can probably figure it out is just to go to the console and see if we're getting errors. So we're not getting errors, but let's look. So right here on our CSS, it's telling us was ignored due to a mime type mismatch. That's a bit vague, and um, what it means is that, at least according to the browser, we're not sending back a mime type. Uh, which would kind of say something about the bootstrap file, the bootstrap.css file, which is not something we've modified nor should we. That's coming directly from Bootstrap. So then what does this mean? It's actually a bit misleading, but let's take a look and see what's coming over the network. So we're just going to go ahead and refresh this. Let's see now it should go. Okay, so here's our CSS file. Notice the type is blank. There's nothing there. So we're going to stop this. And this comes back to needing some middleware. So what we need is a piece of middleware called use static files. And save that and run now. So this right here gives us access to files inside of www.root and which are all those static files that we just added. All right, so let's go to our page. And you can see now we're starting to get color coming in on these. We didn't install those buttons, but you can see Bootstrap is now kicked in. Let's go ahead and inspect that and see some of the differences here. And go to our console. So we no longer have that CSS issue. Let's go over here to network. Just do a record and refresh. And there we go, text CSS. So that resolved the issue. So that's one thing you will definitely want to do um, is make sure you do have that piece of middleware for using static files. All right, so let's just take a quick look at what a regular project looks like that already has Bootstrap in it. So we're going to do a file new. And this is going to be an ASP.NET Core as well. And this time we're just going to go with the core application and then we're going to do web application. Go ahead and click to install. And this right here will just give us the Razor Pages version. But notice over here, in our WW root, we've got all of that installed. Uh, these dependencies are coming in. Let's take a look at our startup real quick. I'm just going to expand this. So going down here, you can see they already have used static files. They already have some routing built in for us by default so that we do go to a 
route that is likely in one of these pages here. So let's see, they're sending us to index. Take a look at index. There we are, index model. So let's go ahead and run this now. And if we take a look at layout, that's probably where the references for Bootstrap are going to be found. And you can see there, they're going into lib uh, distribution CSS bootstrap.css, the same place we went earlier. And I think that will, yeah, break up another browser window. And this is going to go to home index, I believe is what that route was bringing it to. All right, so there we are, bootstrap enabled by default just out of a brand new project. And if we would have chosen that MVC project that was just to the right of this template, that would have displayed the same. So they're basically creating the same visuals as what the MVC project would have had as well. And notice all the tag helpers getting lit up in here too. All right, so that is a look at how to integrate Bootstrap into an empty project. And really what we were doing there is just seeing how to build it up, how it works from the ground up without having the wizards in place. So next what we're going to do is just get a summary of what we've covered in this module.